Mr. Mola, it's great to have you. Thanks for the time today. Thanks for having me. You know, we, we keep hearing from some of the banks, especially that the consumer is in great shape, but I don't think it's oversimplifying to say that you think the economy is struggling here. Yeah, no, it certainly is. Uh, you know, there's certainly some, some issues that we have to contend with, inflation being the primary one, as you've mentioned, uh, food inflation, labor throughout the PL. Uh, the consumer is strong, so that's been a benefit. But but you know, managing the cost side has been has been it required a lot of focus over the last eighteen months. Has the drawdown in a lot of agriculture? Uh, we we watch it from a a chart standpoint here, uh, and the way ag ag is traded and commodities are traded. But has that made its way down to you? You know, we see it. So new contracts that we're signing, we see uh, price improvement over the last you know call it. Uh, you know, month and a half since the beginning of June. Uh, but from a PL perspective, you have to remember we, we, we signed contracts in advance. So, uh, you know, on average, restaurant companies will sign contracts about a quarter in advance. So, for it to hit the PL fully will be around Q4, Q1. So, we're still managing uh, with the old prices, the old contracts. So, it'll take some time for that to work its way through to the PL. So, then, so what's pricing strategy as you wait for, for that period of time? As we wait to get to Q1? Yeah, you know, so we're we're being nimble. Um, you know, we've been nimble. We've, we started seeing the price inflation really in the middle of last year, so it's something we've been contending with and being thoughtful about uh, timing and duration of contracts, vendor management. Uh, so we're going to continue to do that, and so we're we're taking advantage of the prices where we can, um, and uh, and and you know, really watching closely. We do think prices are going to continue to decline here relative to the peak we saw in uh, end of May. Um, so just being thoughtful about those contracts and making sure that we are able to take advantage of the, the declines here going forward. What is it you're seeing on the demand side? How would you characterize it? Uh, you know, and check size as well. So to give us a sense as to your customer and what you expect heading into what may be a little bit more of a tumultuous economic period. You know, demand's been strong really since the beginning of 2021. You know, we had that period where obviously, uh, you know, all restaurants were shut down in, in, in 2020 and then we really saw a lot of pent-up demand, and that came to the fore uh, during 2021. Uh, you know, for us, demand has held strong. Uh, there's been a bit of trade-off between traffic and check, as, as you pointed out. Part of that is strategic. We've we've shifted more towards a celebratory, elevated, uh, you know, group dining sort of strategy. So some of that is natural, but but some of it also is economic, um, and people are making decisions about what where to spend money. You guys mentioned travel. They're still seeking experiences and. Um, uh, and, 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 you know, spending less in some other areas. So, you know, I expect some traffic decline relative to what we saw last year. We're making up a lot of that in terms of check size and, and some pricing. Um, but on an overall basis, from a volumes and sales perspective, we're up, you know, still mid-teens from, from 2019, so still relatively strong. The, the, the issue for us has been on the cost side, which is where we, uh, where we spend a lot of time trying to manage through. Mm -hmm. So talk about for a moment uh, some of the countermeasures that you're able to take, uh, digital integration, managing headcount, uh, opening smaller concepts. W what, what's on the menu there, and, and how much does it offset the downside pressures we've been talking about? You, you nailed it, right? So, you know, fortunately for us, when, you know, we bought this business three years ago, and we came in with, with a thesis that was heavily focused on some of the things you just mentioned, particularly technology. Um, and when, when people talk about technology investment, you really think about the consumer side first, but there's a really important element on the back end uh, infrastructure technology, uh, technology in our kitchens to make our chefs more efficient, to reduce waste, uh, technology to help our hosts become more efficient, um, you know, it, it, ERP technology throughout the, throughout the company. So all of these investments we made really in 2019, 2020 have really been helpful now uh, in dealing with, with pricing increases because we can be more efficient and we can uh, manage, you know, with, with fewer people and with less waste. Uh, so that's been critical. On the people side, you know, the other area you really need to invest in is your people, right? You really need to invest in making the, uh, the equation to work for P.F. Chang's more attractive than working for anybody else because the labor pool is shrinking. So you need to win on a relative basis uh, relative to your, to, your, to your competitors. And you can't fake that. You have to invest in people. You have to invest in, in, in benefits and in, in pay time off and different things. So, um, you know, we've, we've been doing that. We're continuing to do that. And that's helped us manage through, uh, you know, what's been a difficult environment.